Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and um, it's uh, 10 o'clock at night, but I thought I'd do the intro to this uh, video that I'm doing here today. Uh, now, I've received my loudspeaker protector kit. It's, uh, there's the uh, catalogue number there, K5167 from Ultronics, Build It Yourself Electronic Kits, and uh, you would have seen this uh, number in the previous video to do with that power supply for the SC480 when I showed the block diagram. Uh, this speaker protector can help save your expensive loudspeakers in the event of an amplifier failure. It also includes turn on and turn off muting to negate the thump sound during power changes. The unit can run off almost any DC rail voltage. Well, kind of. And what's interesting is the kit difficulty rating is one. Now, if you look at what they say the kit difficulty ratings are, one would be simple PCB typically requires no soldering. Um, all right, the uh, box does actually contain a blank PCB and a bunch of components. So I would assume I have to solder them. Two would be soldering with some drilling and wiring. Well, it should really have been uh, marked as a two. Anyhow, I'm pretty sure that this uh, kit is based off of their previous design, uh, which they did in around about 1994 or 96 or something. So it'd be based off of a similar design they've already come up with. Why change it if it works? Um, Thing is, the one that I built, I paid $50 for it. This one was only like $25, but I paid $50 for it, and I could not make the relay turn on with whatever the supply voltage was that I put on it. It just would refuse to turn on. Um, I spent an hour and a half mucking around trying to figure out what was wrong with it, and ended up cracking the shits and throwing it across the room onto the floor, and busted the plastic cover off the relay. Didn't do damage to the board, but I've lost the board, and I've also lost the um, instructions that came with it so I can't compare them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully open the package and I just want to have a look at the instructions more than anything else. There's the PCB, standard uh, you know, single-sided board. Now this uh, is interesting, they got uh, put a link here for 22 to 24 volt operation. So we'll have to look at the schematic to that to see what they're going on about there. It's uh, 12 amps at 250 volt AC, that's the contacts, or at 28 volt DC. It's uh, a DC 24 volt relay. Okay, so that's all I needed to know. Oh, well, that's interesting. There's no schematic. Yes, there is. It was on the inside of the uh, packaging. That's uh, what uh, was put on the front of the uh, plastic tray here. So there's the uh, schematics. Now, yes, it's very similar to their original design. Not much has changed. Uh, the right-hand channel and the left-hand channel conversely go into these two transistor networks, but we'll, we'll look at just the right channel one because the left is the same. We've got a low-pass filter here, which is a 47 microfarad 50 volt non-polarized with a 47k1 watt there. Um, and that just simply removes any audio frequencies uh, so that these uh, the next two transistors, Q5 and Q6 and Q7 here uh, can just monitor DC only. So if we look at the right hand channel for the transistors here, uh, the left hand side is the same, just has three transistors like this. Uh, they've got Q5 here which is uh, allowing um, the negative DC to come in through the emitter and come out through the collector and the base is connected to earth. So that transistor will always be turned on, but it'll only allow uh, negative voltage to pass through to the base of this transistor. Now a PMP transistor requires a negative at its base to bias it to turn it on. So when you get a negative DC voltage along through here this transistor will turn on. And as we can see uh, both the line of this Q6 uh, on the emitter and the collector of Q7 connect to this line which we'll, we'll go into in a minute. And Conversely, Q7 here, which is an MPN transistor, is connected 
to the emitter of this transistor here. So this one will only turn on when there's a positive DC voltage present because an MPN transistor requires positive at its space to bias it to turn it on. Now, we'll call this the off line, which is the signal to tell the uh, relay to drop out when there's a DC condition, uh, because that's also connected over here, which is the left-hand side monitoring, which is the same as that. So the emitter of Q9 is connected to the collector of Q10, which is also collected to the emitter of Q6 and the collector of Q7, respectively. So that's our offline. We can also put an over temperature switch which would mount to the heatsink so when it uh, heats up, it'll turn the circuit off. So up here is all the control circuitry for the relay. And on this offline, if there's any D DC, basically what happens is it'll pull the base of this transistor Q3 uh, low, which will then turn off Q4 over here, which is the driver for the relay, and hence the relay will drop out. And that's basically how the DC detection on that works. Um, the loss of AC detection is really uh, between Q1 and Q2 here. So if we look at this side of the circuit now, this is basically our AC sense. Uh, circuit. We've got a full wave rectifier here between D2 and D3. These connect to either side of your uh, transformer uh, secondary and uh, the center tap is what's providing the zero here. So that becomes the negative with respect to this circuit anyway. So this becomes a full wave rectifier. Now um, this basically forward biases through this 10k resistor this transistor to always keep it turned on. Now when this transistor is turned on, Q2 is going to be held uh, low uh, and is is always off for the uh, Q3 here to always remain turned on. So as soon as the voltage disappears off the AC, this transistor will turn off and then this transistor will now be forward biased through this 100k resistor, which comes off of the uh, positive voltage rail, allowing it to turn on, which in essence will then bias this transistor off and cause it to turn off, which means the relay will turn off. And up here you put your positive and negative inputs, uh, they say 24 volt, they say 20 volt DC. Now where it says positive and minus, um, that would be for both bipolar and uh, single-ended, but I would technically would be using this negative input as the zero volt rail or the center tap of the transformer. So the uh, turn on delay after that diode comes through this 100k resistor in this 47 microfarad capacitor, and this is usually discharged when it's off, and um, it will be charged by this resistor. And after about 5 seconds till it reaches about 13.2 volt, this will then forward bias uh, Q3, which will then turn it on and allow the transistor over here, Q4, which is just out of shot, because that's a PMP, to turn on, which will then drive the relay and turn the relay on. Now it does say star, C text for higher voltages. I'm assuming they're referring to R1 and R2, which I would be right. So if you had a supply rail of 20 volt, it'd be R1 at 2K7, half a uh, quarter watt, and R2 would just be a link, uh, which would make sense because it's a 24 volt relay. If your supply rail was 40 volt, it'd be 4K7 and 470 ohm, five watt. Now we can actually test this on a DC power supply to start with and um, see that it would ac actually works, but you've got to connect this uh, CON2 up to the positive voltage rail up here and you put plus and minus across here and my power supply would be able to uh, do that just fine using just only two wires. So. Uh, because the negative here becomes zero or ground. Now we've got to make sure that this circuit is referenced to the ground of the amplifier. So if the uh, amplifier's ground is the negative voltage, it's not a center tap transformer for instance, 
uh, then we would reference that to the negative rail. If this was a bipolar amplifier, therefore the um, zero volt rail was floating at half the voltage potential of the transformer, so it was like, you know, 35 volt one side minus 35 volt the other, well then, yeah, your zero would be sitting at 35 volt. So we would actually use the center tap section of the transformer or zero volt rail instead of the negative because I don't think it's going to work properly using the negative off the supply which might have been my whole entire problem with the last one and immediately looking in the component bag I cannot see a 5 watt 470 microfar uh, 4 470 ohm resistor in there so it looks like I'm going to have to go out and actually buy one so for in all this to work I'm going to have to buy my own resistor. It would have been nice if they'd like supplied it, but they didn't. So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I know my supply voltage will be close to 40 volt between positive and zero. So I'll be using a 4K7. I've got plenty of them lying around. And I just need to go out and buy a 470 ohm 5 watt resistor. No great big deal. So that's enough talking about this thing. I suppose I should just build it. That board's actually got quite a bit of a warp in it too. But I should just probably just build it and uh, test it out. But um, yeah, so we'll get on to doing that in the next bit here and uh, we'll test it out and see if it works. And miraculously, it's the next day. I've been out and I've got my 470, mark, uh, 470 ohm 5 watt resistor to go here. So that's all set to go. That's all I need. Um, so now I'm going to assemble this. Now, I'm not going to do it in time lapse. It's pretty simple of how to assemble it. We would start with the uh, smaller resistors first, remembering um, R1 over here uh, is going to have to be changed to a 4K7 instead of the 2K7 because I'm running on plus minus 35 volt, so or 35 volt in respect to this. So remember to change that one as well and then it's just simply a matter of doing all the low profile components like resistors first, uh, diodes, then move up to the larger ones like the 1 watt devices, uh, maybe the 5 watt device, the smaller capacitors and then finally the larger capacitors and uh, input output connections which are just uh, the splayed terminal things. Uh, these are, were designed to actually have one of those ones which was a splay terminal with a screw in the middle of it. But these also work fine. So that's what I'm going to do is do that. And also don't forget to put the, uh, th the three connectors along the edge of the board here. Uh, these also interlock with each other. So I believe you don't have to interlock them because they just fit side by side like that. And that one is slightly different to the other two. That's interesting. So why are they different? Hmm. Okay, well I might have to make a decision as to what to use this connector for. I'll probably make that the temperature sensor one because uh, yeah, you wouldn't need very heavy wires for that, but I'll leave these two uh, larger profile connectors for the AC in and the DC in. So that's those two here, and the temperature connector one can go there. So I'm not gonna do this in time-lapse. I'm going to just assemble it in pieces and then take little snippets across the way, because I can. So let's get started. Okay, as I was starting to put resistors on here, I've noticed the first issue. They've only provided you with two 22K resist, uh, resistors here. There should be four. So I'm actually missing two 22K resistors. Luckily I've got them. Um, and also they're using here this rather weird looking resistor here, which is actually a 10K. I believe this to be a half watt device. Um, so that would go over here, but it's not the same as these metal film resistors. Even though technically speaking these metal film resistors are half watt devices anyway, but um, 
These would have been originally designed for the E21 series of resistors, which are a carbon film, so they're all quarter watt. So I'm just putting all the bands around the right way so that the electrons don't fall out. No, so that you can read it in the same direction as you turn the ball one way or the other. That's all that's for is readability. So now I've got to find some replacement 22Ks and a 4K7 and then I'm set to solder these in. So I reckon probably around an hour, maybe hour and a half to assemble this. I wouldn't have thought it would have taken any longer than that. But that's all the low profile resistors including the two that were missing and my 4K7. So now I can move on to using, not using, and these 1 watt devices which are 47k 1 watt so I might as well do them now because they're convenient. Um, and they're going to be high power devices because they go across the uh, speaker in and yeah so being 1 watt devices I'm going to play some slightly proud of the board uh, as I always say to do I mean this is only where the uh, audio signal pass comes in but it still doesn't matter and these are larger copper traces here and here so they're going to take a little bit more heat but it will eventually solder there we go. These ones aren't so bad. Okay. Get rid of our excess. There we go. Uh, so next I think I might do the diodes before I put the larger resistor in. So we've got a set of 1 in 4000 and what are they? Half the prints come off of some of these. One in, four, and then it just disappears. But there should be four thousand and fours. It's one, two, three. For some reason, I've got a fourth one. Oh, there's the fourth one there. Okay, so I'm going to do those diodes. I've got a small signal diode that goes here. A one in, four, one, four, eight. So it goes in there. And a 12 watt, uh, sorry, 12 volt, one watt. Uh, metal film Xenodiode which is an 1N 4742A so I'm going to make sure that this has no conduction in reverse polarity which it does not and it should conduct the normal way which it does so that Xenodiode is working so that needs to also be put in where it goes Uh, so now we can move on to larger profile components. So I might stick this 470 ohm in there. Um, and that's also got to be slightly proud of the board too. So keep that in mind because that can get quite warm. So I'll do that. Put him there. Doesn't have to be like, you know like London Bridge or something, or Tower Bridge or whatever you just need to have it slightly off the board, it doesn't have to be that far off the board you're not trying to launch it into space or anything so these will also take a bit of heat because they're large copper traces as well I'm not exactly sure why they did that I mean obviously for handling more current but right so that's the uh, 470 ohm in. Uh, I've got a choice now of doing the transistors or capacitors or I could put the display connectors in so I might do them. And in actual fact it'd probably be easy to take this out of the tool to solder it so I can put it flat on the desk so at least when I apply a lot of heat it's not going to fall back out again. Now just be careful in coming into contact with these because they're going to still be red hot 
So now I'm going to move on to, well, it's a choice between the capacitors, which is, there's only really this 470 nanofarad here and a bunch of electrolytics and non-polarized, which are larger, or mounting the transistors. So I might actually mount the transistors uh, first, because it would be easier to get to them now when the capacitors are not in the way. Now they're trimmed. Alright, so that's all the transistors soldered in. So now I can move on to, well, the capacitors I guess. Um, but I might put my terminal headers in first. So remembering I'm going to use this funny one there for the uh, detect for the uh, temperature switch. And these other two larger ones with larger hole spacing in them I can use there. Because this is a slightly different terminal. I'm just reusing some old solder from other kits. Um, so next I'll put this 470 nanofarad capacitor in. And uh, that goes there. And whilst we're at it, we'll load the 47 microfarad 50 volt capacitor or 63 volt capacitor. Which is there, observing polarity, positives over there. Just sits in there like that. And these two large 47 not microfarad 50 volt non-polarized. There's supposed to be two there, but or two sets, but they've only given us two, so there should be four. Alright, well before assembling it, it probably would have been a good idea to consult the instructions. We put the two 47 microfarad capacitors uh, in the first holes, the other ones are left open and where we only had two 22k resistors there's a reason for that because the other one where it should go should be a link so I think they do this so you can actually make a, a, a lower lower pass filter but um, yeah there should be a link wire there and there which corresponds to there and there I'm so <laughs> sorry I made a mistake so I'm going to remedy that, take those two extra resistors out and put in some link wire, they've provided some link wire, so I'll do that, I mean, you know, who cares, they're only like 5 cent resistors, that's almost complete, as I say you just leave these two open, last piece of the puzzle is to install this relay, and that would be the construction of the board complete. So now all I need to do is they've provided me with four mounting st standoffs. So I just need to put them in with the screws, uh, these things, and um, then we can get about testing it and see if it works. And hopefully it works first time. If I can get the screw to agree with me. There we go. They're rather large screws for these but anyway well isn't that nice they've given us actually eight screws so four for the other side of these standoffs that was nice of them usually they only give you four for the top side and then you have to provide your own for the bottom okay I'm not complaining okay now we're ready for testing I've got my supply set at a roughly 36 volt 36.2 I'm going across the positive and negative terminals of the supply so I'm actually using both power supplies in parallel and series to give me that voltage. Now, um, testing is relatively easy. I need to connect one side of the AC uh, detector, loss of AC detector, to the positive rail, which I have done. And this green wire is the negative, but this is going to be the zero volt rail of the amplifier. So it's going to be referencing the negative of this circuit to the zero volt rail to work correctly. Otherwise, it will not detect negative DC um, on the inputs correctly. So first test is to turn it on and see if the relay pulls in after five seconds. Here we go. And it does. That's more like three seconds. So that's working. And this one looks like it has an LED on the, on the uh, relay, which it does. 
So now I need to test the DC section. So I need to connect this to negative, uh, which is zero, which is our reference point. Okay, and this is the output, that's the input, that's where we need to test. And we're going to use a good old 9 volt battery. So we turn that on again. There's the relay, so I'll test it in the positive going direction. There goes the relay. There it comes back. Reverse the battery around. Yep, so it's uh, detecting DC just nicely. So that's working. Fine. So that's the right hand channel. Just to make sure the left hand channel is working because they use separate transistors. So I'll change the uh, input point to there. Do the test again. Yep. And swap them around. Yep. Right, very good. So both channels on this uh, module are working fine. Of course, I'm only going to be using one because it's going to be used in the uh, guitar amplifier. Um, but I can choose which ones to use, whichever is conveniently close. Um, so that concludes the video on this um, speaker protector. It's based on their original one back in '96. This was designed, I forgot to mention, for the 135 watt ultra low distortion amplifier. Uh, which was around about 2011, and that is starting to get a little bit warm. Um, yeah, so it's the same design, but uh, I built one before and it didn't work. This one works just nicely. So I'm going to conclude this video here. I thank you for watching, and as always, remember to comment, rate, and uh, subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description. Anyway, this is Yashra Thay saying, see ya. Happy speaker protecting. Um, of course, before I go, might be a good idea to see if the uh, loss of AC detection circuit works, which it does. Yep. Right, now I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank you for watching.